Hi everyone, so this is a beginner's class. So I'd like you to have a strap handy. It doesn't have to be a yoga strap, it can be a belt, a scarf, um, or anything you have handy. And we'll start in a cross-legged position. Taking the hands on top of the knees and closing down the eyes. Using this moment of stillness to connect with our breath. Nice, smooth inhales and exhales. And then begin to jut the chin forward slightly and then take the chin all the way down to the chest. So we're opening up in the back of the neck. Breathing into the back body and then taking the head all the way over to the right. We're opening up through the left side of the neck. You can also take your right hand just on top of the side of the head and just rest it there using the weight of the arm to bring you deeper into this stretch. So we're, no, we're not pulling or yanking the head, we're just gently guiding it down, drawing that left shoulder down and then release, roll the head back through center and over to the other side. And again, you can stay here or maybe you can take your left hand on top of the side of the head and just gently use that weight. Just bring you a little bit deeper as you draw your right shoulder down. And release. Uncross the legs and come to lie on your back. Straightening out through both legs. And then bending into the right knee and cupping the hands at the shin. We're going to squeeze the knee in towards us, but we want to take it to the outside of the rib cage. So just take the knee to the outside of the right rib cage and draw it up towards the right shoulder. Keeping both feet flexed. And using your arm muscles to find this compression in the hip flexor. And release, grab hold of your strap and wrap the strap around the ball of the foot. And then straighten out through the leg any amount. So you have each end of the strap in each hand. And then we're flexing that right foot so we're drawing the toes in towards the face. Really opening up through the back of the leg. And you can walk your hands up the strap as much as they'll go and then let the weight of the arms just bring you deeper into this. Take some deep breaths into the back of the knee. And then taking both straps into your right hand, let your left hand come onto your left hip to remind you to keep it grounded and then open the right leg over to the right. Finding this stretch in the inner thigh. And then bring the leg back up through center, switching hands, so taking hold of both straps in your left hand. Let the right hand just drop down, and then taking that right leg over to the left. And rolling onto that left hip. Your foot doesn't have to come all the way down onto the ground, it can be lifted and the leg can also be bent if it feels too intense. Otherwise we're finding this stretch in the IT band. I'm taking some deep breaths here. And then drawing the leg back up Dropping the strap, keep the leg lifted and just clasp the hands behind the thigh, the calf or the ankle, wherever's accessible for you. Begin to point and flex through the foot. So we're just awakening through the top of the foot and the Achilles. And release the leg and bring it down to the ground. Taking it to the other side. So bending into the left leg and cupping the shin with the hands. And just drawing that knee 
outside the ribcage and up towards the left shoulder, keeping both feet flexed. Find this compression, so this deep squeezing sensation as we breathe here. And release, grab hold of your strap, wrap it around the ball of the foot. And take an end of the strap in each hand. Straighten out the leg any amount. Drawing the toes in towards the face. And then again, if you want to, you can walk your hands further up the straps and then just let the weight of the arms bring you deeper into the stretch. And then grab hold of both straps in your left hand. Right hand comes down on your right thigh to keep it grounded. And then open the left leg over to the left. Breathing into the inner thigh. Bringing the leg back up through center, switch hands, grabbing hold of both straps in your right hand, left arm comes out to the side on the ground and then take that left leg over to the right, rolling onto your right hip. Try and keep both shoulders um, making contact with the mat. Breathe into the intensity. And release, bring the leg back up, drop the strap, and clasp the hands behind the thigh, the calf, or the ankle, and point and flex through that foot. And then just hug both knees in towards you. Roll over onto one side and then just gently push yourself up and we'll meet in tabletop. So hands and knees, fingers nice and spread. Just check that you have your joints stacked so your, your um, elbow is above your wrist, shoulder above elbow and that your hip joint is directly above your knee. And we'll come to some cat cow. So take a big inhale, drop the belly, tailbone and head lifts up towards the ceiling, and then deep exhale, round through the spine, chin comes in towards chest. Take a few more, so inhale into what we call cow pose, and exhale, round the spine into cat. Inhaling again, arch the back, head comes up, and exhale, round through the back, push the mat away with the hands and come back to neutral, a nice neutral spine. Take your left hand to the center of the mat, right under your nose, and then as you inhale, sweep the right arm up, and then as you exhale, thread it through and hover. And then inhale, sweep it back up so the shoulders stack, and then exhale, thread it under and hover. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, thread the needle and this time let that right shoulder come down onto the mat. Your right side of your face comes down onto the mat for this nice shoulder stretch. So really try to tuck that right shoulder underneath you until you feel this stretch. 
your left hand can either stay where it is or maybe you can extend it straight ahead of you. Take some breaths here. And release, bring that left hand back down onto the mat. Inhale and sweep that right arm back up and then come back to tabletop taking it on the other side. So taking the right hand to center in the center of the mat, inhale, sweep the left arm up, exhale, thread it through and hover. Inhale, sweep it up, exhale, thread the needle and hover. Inhaling it back up and then exhale, thread it through and this time let the left shoulder come down onto the mat. Scoot the shoulder underneath you till you feel that nice stretch. And then you can keep the right hand where it is or maybe you want to extend it out ahead of you. And take a few deep breaths here. And then bring that right hand back down onto the mat. Inhale, sweep the left arm back up and then coming back to tabletop. Good, coming all the way down onto the belly. Keeping your hands at um, just underneath your shoulders and we'll roll up to a baby cobra. So just coming up to about the navel and then exhaling to come down. We'll inhale to come up, keep the feet grounded and exhale to roll down. Inhale, rolling up to baby cobra. And this time we'll stay lifted and then see if you can take the hands off the mat. So we're just using our back muscles. And then coming all the way down. And then taking the hands a little bit further out so they're coming off the mat. Elbows point upwards, you're tenting your fingers. And then we're gonna roll up again, this time a little bit higher, exhaling to come down. Inhale to roll up, so a little bit of pressure in the fingertips, but not too much. We want to use the back muscles as well. Inhale, roll up. Exhale to come down. Inhale to roll up. This time we'll stay lifted, and then we'll drop the right shoulder into the center as we look behind us over our left shoulder. Another shoulder stretch, inhaling back to center. And then as you exhale, left shoulder dips in towards center. Look behind you over your right shoulder. Coming back up and coming all the way back down onto the mat, taking your hands below your shoulders and then pushing yourself all the way back to a child's pose. So hips come onto the heels, arms come straight out in front and then breath to movement will come forward Sink the hips low, so we're coming into a cobra. You can bend into the elbows if it's too much of a back bend to have them straight. Exhale, back to child's pose. Inhale, come forward, lower the hips, open the chest. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, coming forward, lower the hips, open the chest. Exhale, child's pose. And then we'll come up to the table, tuck, tuck under the toes and come up into our first downward facing dog. So hands are at shoulder width, feet are at hip width. Imagine yourself like an upside down triangle. So we're trying to spin our sit bones up towards the ceiling. Let's pedal it out. Any movements here that feel nice. Knees do not have to be straight. Be more concerned about the length of the spine and then slowly begin to walk up to the front of the mat. Feet are at hip width, deep bend in the knees, take opposite elbow with opposite hand coming into rag doll and we'll just sway from side to side, feel the release in the lower back. And then let the arms hang and we'll roll all the way up to stand. Coming into a mountain pose. Get nice and strong, get grounded. 
find length in the spine. And then we'll inhale, sweep the arms up, and then grab hold of opposite um, elbow with opposite hand again, this time with our arms above our heads. Take a big inhale to find lots of length in the spine, and then as you exhale, lean over to the right, gently pulling that left shoulder down so we're finding this openness in the side body. Take some deep breaths and then come all the way back up. Take a big inhale, find length, and then as you exhale, lean over to the other side. Coming back to center, release the arms. Coming back to a uh, mountain pose at the front of the mat. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. You can bend into the knees if you need to. Inhale to a halfway lift. So you're coming up halfway, nice long spine. You can take your hands to your shins. And then exhale, fold forward again. And then step that left leg all the way back. Knee comes down, top of the foot comes down. And then take your hands on top of your right knee to help lift you up, bringing your shoulders above hips. And then try to sink in and sink down with the hips so you feel this deep quad stretch. Keep your right knee directly above your ankle or a little bit behind. Bring the hands to heart center. Good, and then taking your left hand on to the outside of the right knee, right hand comes out behind you and twist. You're twisting over to the right. You can gaze at that back hand if it's not painful for your neck. Otherwise, keep the neck neutral. And unwind. Bring the hands on top of the hips and begin to straighten out through that right leg. As you send your hips further back, flex into the right foot. And then you either stay up here and maybe practice folding forward slightly. Or you can take your hands on top of your shin for balance, we're not putting too much pressure on there. Or if your hands reach the ground, you can come onto the fingertips. Avoid any rounding in the upper spine. And then see if you can maybe inhale and then exhale to forward fold. If you have blocks, you can have a block on either side of the leg. And if your right leg is bent a little bit, that's fine. That's totally fine. Don't worry about it. To come out, bend back into the right knee. Pick up that back knee by tucking the toes under and then step the left foot to meet the right at the front of the mat. Once you get there, inhale to your halfway lift, bringing the hands onto the shins, and then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up, tall mountain. Exhale, hands through heart center. And take the same on the other side. Inhale, sweep the arms up, tall mountain. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold, and then step that right foot all the way back. Back knee comes down, top of the foot comes down, and then put your hands on top of your left knee to bring you up, shoulders above hips. And then sink down into our low runner's lunge. Make sure the knee is directly above or a little bit behind the ankle. Work on getting a nice long spine here. And then bringing the hands to heart center, twisting open towards the left this time, bringing your right hand to the outside of the left knee and your left hand comes out behind you for this twist. You can gaze at that back hand or keep the neck neutral. And then unwind, bringing the hands onto the hips and then just beginning to straighten out through that left leg. Flex the toes, toes so that, the, that they're pointing in towards you and then you're beginning to fold forward. You can keep the hands on the hips or maybe you can bring them down onto the shins for extra support or if you can reach the ground or if you have blocks you can take them on either side of the leg. We're exhaling to fold forward any amount. You can have a bend in that left knee 
if you need it. You're always inhaling to find length and exhaling to find depth. And then come up, bend back into the left knee, tuck under the back toes. And then this time we'll step back to downward facing dog. So left foot steps back to the back of the mat, finding our down dog, taking a few breaths here. Please do take a bend in the knees if you need to. And then we'll inhale as we lift the right leg back. And then exhale, we're going to bring it in between the hands and I'll just demonstrate you can use your right hand to help get you there. Once you're there keep that back knee lifted this time and then just pick the fingertips off off the mat feel the leg muscles engage as you do that and then see if you can bring the arms up overhead for our crescent lunge. Please keep the back knee bent if you feel any sort of dumping into the lower back so we really want to be able to tuck our tailbone under and if tucking your tailbone up, bone under means having a bent leg then please do that bringing the hands to heart center we'll do the same motion but this time our back knee is lifted so bringing the left hand onto the outside of the right leg and the right hand behind you for our twist and then unwind bringing the hands down and then we're spinning the back heel down so the back foot is it is at about 45 degrees and then any amount straighten into the front leg it can still be bent if you need it to be if having the hands down on the ground doesn't feel right you can keep them up at the hips and just fold forward that way Wherever you are, begin to come out by bending into that right knee and then stepping back to downward facing dog. Moving on to the other side, so inhale, lift the left leg and exhale, squeeze it into the chest. See if you can step it in between the hands. If not, you can use your left hand to help get you there. Check your footing, maybe widen the legs a little bit if you need more balance and then Stay low, but pick the fingertips up off the ground. Feel the leg muscles engage. And then slowly come up, shoulders above hips. And again, notice if you're finding too much of an arch in the spine, tuck the tailbone under, bend that back knee if you need to. Nice, strong crescent lunge. Bringing the hands to heart center. Taking the right hand to the outside of the left knee, twisting over to the left and bringing that left arm out behind you. And unwind, bringing the hands down onto the mat, Spinning that back heel down so the foot is at 45 degrees and then straighten the front leg any amount. Doesn't have to be totally straight. And then folding over. Always the option to have the hands on the hips if you need more height. Take some deep breaths. And then bend back into the left leg and step the right foot to meet the left at the front of the mat. And then come up onto the toes and come into a little crouch. So bringing the hips on top of the heels. See if maybe you can catch a little bit of balance by bringing the hands to heart center and then sit back. Straighten out through both legs, peel the flesh out from under your sit bones and then grab hold of your strap again. Take the strap around the bottoms of the feet, find some length in the spine so you inhale really find length and as you exhale we're folding forward 
without rounding in that upper spine. So this is where the straps come in handy so you can really find traction and pull yourself forward. It's a forward fold and not a downward fold. Maybe after a few breaths you feel like you can maybe reach the feet. You can always inhale to come up and maybe wiggle some space and then as you exhale maybe you can come down a bit further. You're imagining more belly to thigh than forehead to knee. And then release, come up. Bending into the right knee and taking the right foot to the outside of the left leg. Taking your right hand behind you, inhale, left arm lifts, and then as you exhale, you're twisting over to the right, you can hug the knee into the chest, or if it's accessible, you can take that left elbow to the outside of that right knee and use that as a kind of lever to push you deeper into this twist. Breathe into the belly. And release, taking it over to the other side. So left foot comes to the outside of the right knee, left hand comes behind you, inhale, sweep the right arm up, and as you exhale, you're twisting over to the left. Again, either hugging that left knee in towards your chest, or taking the right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Breathing into the belly. And then unwind, release the legs, and then come all the way down onto your back. Hug the knees into the chest. Give a little rock from side to side. Give your back a little massage. And then release the legs down, coming into our Shavasana. So let the legs be heavy, let the feet fall open. Arms down by the sides, palms face up. Close down the eyes. Notice if you're holding any tension in the body and just release. As always, I encourage you to stay in Shavasana for three to five minutes, longer if you have time. Really important that we give ourselves our Shavasana. I hope you enjoyed this practice and I'll see you next time.